What's up, YouTube? It's Heretic here, and welcome back as we look at an expanded format deck as this weekend's Arizona Regional Championships are being played in the expanded format. So we're going to go ahead and dive into that here for a couple of days here, Thursday, Friday. But anyway, uh, we're going to take a look. Today's deck is Seismitoad Crobat, or Toad Bats for short, which is a deck that's been around for quite a while. And we're just going to gloss over this real quick. We've got three Seismitoady X, our lead attacker, Quaking Punch for two colorless, 30 damage, item lock for your opponent's next turn. Powerful pretty much since it came out. And uh, in Expanded, it's still a force to be reckoned with. So we're going to make use of that. We've also got the Bats part, which is a 4-3-2 Pyramid line of Crobat. Crobat, when you play it from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon, you can place three damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon, which helps deal with Seismitoad's rather low damage output. We also have three Golbat, of course, as part of the evolution line, who does the same thing when he evolves from Zubat, only placing just two damage counters instead of three. Uh, the combination's obviously very solid, and then they both attack for one colorless, dealing sniping damage attacks of their own as well. Next, we have one Mewtwo EX, just a piece of raw muscle. I favor this over the Manectric, just because of its ability to attack for a double colorless for a pretty substantial amount of damage. X-Ball, of course, dealing 20 damage for every energy attached to both active Pokemon. And then we have one Shaman EX for draw power and one Jirachi EX for searching supporters. Basically, draw power as well as stuff like, you know, gadget supporters, Lysander, Team Flare Grunt, Zero Sick, AZ... Or on the first turn, our favorite, of course, is Getsis. So, that's our Pokemon lineup. We get into our items. We have our Ace spec of choice, Computer Search. You can also actually run Rock Guard in this deck. But I think just having the Computer Search, just optimizing the first turn Getsis that much more. As well as just streamlining our plays throughout the course of the game. Just overall too good to really pass up on. Uh, next, we have just a lone copy of Tool Scrapper. This is mainly for mirror matches and Seismitoad variants that opt to play Headringer. Um, you could probably swap that out for any number of things. Super Odd, uh, Karen if you're going post Arizona, if you're looking at like a Philly list or something, or even Sacred Ash. Uh, special Charge is a thing. So all kinds of options you can kind of work with with that one slot. And then we have our four ofs, which would be Hypnotoxic Laser for extra damage once again, as well as Sleep Disruption. Super scoop up to reuse our bats and potentially heal our seismitoads and deny prize cards. And then four Ultra Ball and four VS Seeker, which is pretty much the norm. To get into our supporters, we got four Professor Sycamore and four N. And then we have two copies of Lysander and our one ofs, which are Team Flare Grunt and Zero Sick for disruption, energy removal, and potentially tool removal with Zero Sick. AZ for the same purpose as Super Scoop Up, reusing bats and denying prizes. And then our our first turn star, which is Getsis. You know, this card basically rules the format and expanded and with good reason. So <laughs> Getsis just that good of a card, forcing your opponent to reveal their hand and then sending all their item cards back. And then of course we get to draw one card for every item card that they are forced to send back into the deck. Uh, stadium count, only one Verbank even though we run our full four lasers, and that's because we run two Silent Labs. If you go first, you get the Silent Lab and gets this combo. That is just absolutely wicked, almost insurmountable, unless your opponent has a supporter card in hand. And then we have three Fighting Fury Belts. I've opted to run Fighting Fury Belt over Muscle Band, even though it is 10 less damage, mainly because a 220 HP Seismitoad EX is just way too big to be able to knock out in one shot, unless you're hitting it for weakness, of course. Even Night March decks will struggle to hit that number. And against a deck like this, where we can pick off Joltix and such with Bats, and then attack to KO a Pumpkaboo or a Mew. Just overall, such a great Night March matchup, which makes this such a strong play going into Arizona, I feel like. And just all around, just a lot of control here. Um, then we have four double colorless, obviously, for our attacks. Three water energy. If you go first, you could go and opt for the water energy attachment instead of the double colorless. It also allows us to eventually late game hit a grenade hammer to potentially end the game if need be. So that's our list. And we are going to go ahead and get into some games here and see if we can take this oldie but goodie to a couple of wins. Okay, so we're gonna start off against fighting. All right, 
So, Landorus EX seems like it could be a thing. Or maybe it's Dawn Fan, I don't know. Well, take the first turn play. Absolutely. Alrighty, what do we got? Okay, so we start with a Toad. And not the greatest opening hand. I guess it's serviceable, but lack of draw power definitely is a thing here. So our opponent mulligans out. And based on that hand, I'm going to think Don Fan probably, but I don't know. I mean, Landorus could still be a thing, I suppose. Could also be like a Groudon, like a, like a K-Back style Groudon from a couple of years ago. Uh, so yeah, we'll take the mulligan draw. That's helpful. All right, so we're going to go ahead and use that to search out... Oh, geez, what do we do with this? I think we do just throw one of these water energies, to be honest. I'm going to go find Getsis. I realize we do need to hit another energy now, but Getsis is just too powerful, I think, and can always try to super scoop, I guess, to hit another draw supporter. Probably should have checked to see if Getsis was in the deck before we grabbed the uh, Jirachi. So we're going to go ahead and play it. And we get only two. Wow. Okay, so Hex, Fighting Stadium, Sycamore. Oh, he's got the Sycamore. Yeah, that's that sucks. Okay, we do hit the AZ, though. So that's like a slow track to uh, getting our Jirachi back. Especially since our Super Scoop Up didn't work. Um... All right, so we're just going to go ahead and attach here, and I think we'll pass. Not going to play the lab down, only because he's got the fighting stadium, so he could just immediately bump it from play. Okay, so there's the fighting stadium, so we'll be able to knock that now. And we see a Professor Sycamore. So he discards the Lysander, with that he, apparently what he just drew, the Hex Maniac, and carving break so we're gonna see a fighting energy come down and that's gonna be a world of hurt real fast 80 damage thanks to uh thanks to the fighting stadium there so and we don't have the item lock in the slightest so we'll put another zubat down here and i think we still have to az up this one and i'm actually not gonna play it down just yet we will Golbat for 20 damage. And we're actually going to hold the lab for one more turn. Hopefully he doesn't go strong energy or muscle band or something and knock us out. But if he does, it's whatever. We could have just gone ahead and searched and then and silent labbed here. But I think we're going to wait. So he discards a Karina and an N off of that Ultra Ball. Okay, and it is a Zygarde, so it looks like he is going the EX route. Of course, Halucha is still just like our worst nightmare. Okay, so he's going to VS Seeker for the Karina. And, let's see. Okay, so Karina's going to be played. I'm guessing we see another Halucha here. Okay, so he grabs Carbink instead, which is a good play. And then he gets the Muscle Band, which is going to get him the knockout on our Toad. We do have another Seismitoad in hand. So, Muscle Band goes on to Halucha, which is going to put us down a couple of prize cards. And that's going to make N an option here, actually, off of that Jirachi, as opposed to the uh, Professor Sycamore that we would normally go for here. So, we draw Team Flare Grunt, which I'm not really too concerned about using right now. I'm going to put the Toad down, and we're going to get the Jirachi Search. And we want the N here, or I think we're just going to take the Sycamore for now. It's only one card, so we're going to put, let's see, yeah, we're going to put the Silent Lab into play, and we're just going to Professor Sycamore. And we're going to miss all kinds of stuff, okay. And of course, Shaman is not usable. <laughs> so we get Tool Scrap, the... Muscle band off. Go ahead and lay down the Fighting Fury Belt. And we can also do an Ultra Ball search here. Throw those out. I'm going to go find Crobat. Oh, wrong one. Okay, there we go. Now it's working. 
So we'll get some more damage down, and then we're going to try to knock that thing out. Nope. Not happening. All right, so we're just going to leave Crobat up there, I think. Since he can't be touched by Halucha and has fighting resistance. So that's not the worst thing to leave up in the active spot, I feel like. So he's going to max potion the 50 damage off of Halucha, which is a little bit frustrating. See a trainer's mail here. And he grabs a fighting fury belt. Now that could go anywhere here. I, if he's going to try to Carbink break, then I would think Carbink is not the recipient here. He goes with the... With the Zygarde, which now has 230 HP. Plays a startling megaphone, knocks our Fighting Fury Belt out of play. And waiting for like a Sycamore or something here. Retreats into Zygarde. But instead we just see a Lance Pulse, so 50 damage because of resistance. So we draw into another Fighting Fury Belt, which we can play down. And we're going to go ahead and grab our Sycamore back from the discard pile. And try to, at some point here, get an item lock going. Okay. So, we're going to use Super Scoop up again. We got heads this time, so we can bring Crobat all back to our hand. And bring Seismitoad into the active. We've got our Double Colorless here. We can play Hypnotoxic Laser. Get the Sleep Effect. And we're going to go ahead and throw Verbank City Gym down over our Silent Lab here as well can get 20 damage onto Zygarde here with with Golbat and then we can Quaking Punch for 40 more damage plus we'll add 30 from the poison and with with Zygarde's ability to heal we really do need to get as much damage on it as quickly as possible normally I don't like overriding that silent lab but in this case I do feel it was necessary so we're going to take a Lance Pulse here for 70. 30 more damage comes down from the Poison. So we're going to be able to lay 70, which would put it up to 190. So we're actually going to be 10 short, it looks like. Now we could... Let's see, we already discarded Shaman. We could go grab another Golbat to finish this knockout. We could discard Laser and Zero Sick to do it. So we're going to be up to 130. We'll be up to 150 here. So yeah, we would get it up to we would get him up to 220. So we're gonna computer search. I think I'm actually just gonna go for the sycamore here and well, I want to. I don't want to throw away that lab. Oh man, this is actually really awkward. Um, I think we're just gonna play the slow game here. I realize this might be considered a bad play by some, but we're gonna go grab a gold bat. Okay, so we can Golbat here for some more damage. We can bring him up to enough to where he would be knocked out. So the Quaking Punch brings him up to 210, and the Poison finishes the job. So we will claim two prize cards. We do get an N off the prizes and a Crobat, a couple of very good prize cards for our two prize knockout. So of course Halucha will come back up. And the reason I didn't want to get rid of the Silent Lab is because of this Carbink that's sitting here. We've got a decent number of bats already used up as well as it looks like three of our four super scoop ups. We're gonna take some damage here, but we're just gonna go ahead and issue a knockout on this uh, Halucha. Get 30 damage that way. Go ahead and Lay that on there, and actually just going to go ahead and bounce the stadium now, since we don't have any poison in effect. Not even going to play the end, just going to knock this thing out. We do, of course, now that that's KO, draw a Hypnotoxic. So Carbink is up in the active now. We see another Halucha come down, but he just passes the turn. So we're going to go ahead and play this Hypnotoxic Laser. Get the heads, and we're just going to Quake and Punch. So 40 damage becomes 50, so we'll be able to knock it out next turn if it st stays in the active, assuming we do not see a break evolution. Something that, again, wouldn't really be too, too surprising. But he hasn't played a card out of his hand other than that Halucha for, for a few turns now, so I see no reason to be ending right now. 
can go ahead and just quake and punch again. Get the knockout. Silent Lab will serve its purpose. And we get the super scoop up. So if if we do manage to survive Halucha here, we can actually try to erase that damage that's on our Seismitoad. We're going to take, it looks like, 80 damage here. If he has the Fighting Stadium, he would have knocked this out. But as it is, he's 10 short. And we're going to get an opportunity here now. And we get it. All right. So we're going to heal the Seismitoad off. We can just bring a Crobat up temporarily. And go ahead and just reload this guy. And again, I'm just not going to play a supporter yet. I'm just going to go ahead and do a Quaking Punch here. And then he can lay down some damage, but we'll be able to knock him out next turn. So Super Scoop Up coming through in the clutch there after a couple early game fails with it. And so he's just going to go ahead and forfeit the game there. I mean, it seemed like he had a pretty dead hand, and we were able to just work with what we had on the board and a couple things we drew off the top. So, you know, not exactly the not the prettiest game, but Seismitoad is kind of built to win ugly, I feel like. So that's perfectly fine. I mean, a win is a win. And so we were able to make the item lock strategy work, even though we missed it for a couple turns early on. So we're going to go ahead and see if we can't get it a little more quickly next game. So go ahead and get going. All right. So it looks like we have hit the night march. Okay. Heads flip, yo. No. I don't want him to go first. Actually, he might make us. Nope. Not happening. Okay. Well, I mean, I guess this could be worse. Alright, so we start out semi-decent, I guess. I mean, not really too fond of these four cards all coexisting in my opening hand. But, we're gonna try to make it work. So he starts with two Mews and a Joltik. Okay. So, we see a Dimension Valley come down right away. And there's an Ultra Ball. Gonna toss out Lysander and a Trainer's Mail. If you want to get this me, dude, that would be beautiful. I'd be more than happy to send those energies, or I mean those uh, BS Seekers back into the deck. So instead he's gonna attach an energy and six card Shaman draw. Let's see if he can start. Yep, there's the Compressors. And this is where we regret not playing this into the uh, Philly format with Karen, where we could just absolutely annihilate this whole thing. So six Night Marchers just dumped into the discard right away with a couple of Compressors. And he still hasn't played a Supporter yet either. We see another Joltik hit the board. He retreats to the Mew that doesn't have any energy. And it's going to pass the turn. Okay. So, and so unfortunately we're going to have to discard a Crobat because we need to draw cards. So, Sycamore, and not the greatest opening hand. We do have a knockout on this Mew, which is, I guess, kind of nice. Go ahead and laser this thing. And well, status cons are irrelevant here. We just quake and punch it. Alright. So, we get the KO. He wakes up. That doesn't really matter. We get another double colorless off the prizes. And I'm guessing the other Mew, yeah, that just, that comes up. And we didn't hit the Silent Lab, unfortunately. So we got to hope that wherever we, wherever we ended up with our item lock this turn is going to be enough. He's doing at least 120, which he's just going to go ahead and do a straight 120 damage with his Mew. So we will evolve into Golbat. And I think we're actually just going to target down one of the Joltics here because we just Hypnotoxic for the knockout here. And we'll attach that there. And I don't really mind playing the N. In a way, that's actually helpful. Kind of wish we wouldn't have attached the energy, but it's whatever. So we'll Quake and Punch here, get a knockout. Again, he wakes up, but again, it doesn't matter. So we get a third Super Scoop up into our hand. Not that any of those are helping us at the moment. And Dimension Valley would have allowed Golbat to attack for free anyway. So one of the Joltics comes up. 
And if he has a double colorless, which we probably, yeah, we would have ended him right into it, he can just knock us out. The silver lining in this is that we do get to knock out both of those Joltix next turn, but we would be giving up item lock to do it. And we also just yielded two prizes by watching our Seismitoad get KO'd. Okay, so I guess we don't really have a choice. We have to lay the Mewtwo down here. But we can evolve into Crobat here. Pick one of these things off. Grab a prize. Oh, that's actually a really good prize. <laughs> Alright, uh, we're gonna we're gonna play that gets us. So we're gonna get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards out of his hand. We're gonna leave him with a double colorless energy. Wow. Oh my goodness. Alright, so we're gonna put another Zubat down, and we've got all kinds of we've got three double colorless in hand, four super scoop ups. <laughs> All right, and we're just going to skill dive into this Joltik for a knockout here. Dang. Gets us going in dry. Wow. That's hardcore. Woo. All right. So he's going to revive one of his Joltiks, I guess. So he top decks into the revive, and then he's got a double colorless in his hand. He actually go, decides to go with the Mew here. But if you Sky Return, you lose. Do, yeah, that's that that's game. I don't know what you're doing there. <laughs> but anyway, we're gonna we're gonna claim this one. Uh, we just skill dive the active. We hit him for weakness, and he's KO'd. Okay, so <laughs> kind of brain fart there on on his end of the or his point part there at the at the end. But uh, you see, just the power of the not first turn gets us. <laughs> we do hit it. Oh my goodness. So. Uh, Things looked a little a little bleak there for about a turn, and then everything just kind of came running back our way. So, anyway, we take out a marquee matchup there, and so we're going to go ahead and call it a video right at that point. But in any case, you can kind of see basically what this deck is built to do. Uh, we didn't get the dark matchup, unfortunately, but if you can keep item lock, if you can get their item lock down against dark with without them getting too many energies on board are usually okay. Archaeops can be mildly frustrating to deal with if they play that version, but otherwise I think it seems like it's pretty solid. Uh, it's definitely tested well for the most part across the board. does take a pretty bad loss to Trevenant, but other than that, uh, this deck's been running pretty well. And so that's what we've got now, and I will see you next time. Cheers!